In this section we consider Couette flow, which is a model flow in fluid mechanics. I will define some coordinates, x and y, and consider the flow between two flat plates a distance d apart. The top plate has velocity big V in the x direction. I'm going to consider a small element of fluid of width delta x and height delta y, and I shall draw that bigger on the right of the picture. Now let's consider the forces on this element of fluid. There is a shear stress at the bottom that I will label tau, a shear stress at the top that I will label tau plus the partial derivative d tau by dy times the distance moved in the y direction between the bottom and top face, which is delta y. In terms of the pressure, if the pressure on the left-hand surface is p, the pressure on the right-hand surface is p plus partial dp by dx times the distance moved in the x direction, which is delta x. Therefore, the net force on this control volume is equal to d tau by dy times delta y times delta x minus dp by dx times delta x times delta y. And if there is no acceleration, which I shall show later, that must be equal to zero. In Couet flow, by definition of Couet flow, the pressure gradient is zero, which implies that, by the above equation, d tau by dy must also be equal to zero. That is, the gradient of the shear stress with y must be equal to zero. In this particular case, tau only varies in the y direction, so I can write this as an ordinary derivative. d tau by dy is equal to zero, and that's because the shear stress only varies in the y direction. Now we know that we can model the shear stress in terms of the velocity gradient. d tau by dy is equal to d by dy of our expression for tau, which is mu, the viscosity, times dvx, where v is the velocity in the x direction, dy, and that's equal to mu d2vx by dy squared, if and only if mu is uniform in space, i.e. does not change in space, and that we know must be equal to zero. And you can integrate that twice to show that the solution is vx is by plus c. The constants b and c are evaluated from the boundary conditions, and if we set vx equals zero when y equals zero, then our expression is that vx is equal to big V divided by d times y. In other words, we have the expected result that the velocity varies linearly with y. We need to show that the flow is not accelerating. In order to do that, we can look at the acceleration of the fluid by considering the material derivative of the velocity field. If we do that, we see that partial dv by dt is equal to zero because the flow is steady. Any d by dx term except for pressure is zero because nothing except pressure changes in the x direction. And vy is zero throughout. And therefore we see that the fluid is not accelerating anywhere. And that means that we were justified to consider the forces around the control volume and set the net force to zero.